Hi, welcome to SQL Lesson 3. We'll be talking a few advanced concepts today and uh, in this lesson it will mostly be about functions. In our previous lesson we looked at the operators in WHERE and SELECT statements, mostly the comparison, logical and arithmetic operators. And in this lesson we'll be talking about functions and also actually aliases which can work with functions and aliases have also have a few other purposes. So what are aliases and why do we need them? We pretty much know aliases are just alternate names and the purpose here is to use them for columns and tables actually. And aliases are generally to provide more meaningful names for columns but they have some other purposes too. Where do we use them? Generally when we have functions in a query then we would be using an alternate name or actually uh, an alias to name that column. If you have really long names for columns and you want to shorten them for your reports let's say then you would you can use an alias in that case and let's say you have a column name called DOB which isn't quite meaningful which actually means date of birth then you would probably rename it in that case. When you are combining two or more columns then a new column is created actually. Let's say for example we had in the previous lesson we used the uh, arithmetic function plus and we said age plus 2 for example. In that case you can name that new column as provide it with a meaningful name so you know what the purpose of that column is. Lastly when we join two or more tables. Uh, by the way, we haven't done that until now. We will be doing the joining of two or more tables in the future. Even in that case, we would be using aliases. Let's look at the column syntax, column alias syntax. It is select column name as and then a co new column name actually. Of course, you can provide aliases for as many columns as you want to and then from and table name. As you all uh, remember the where and order by are optional so I didn't include them here. Another way is to just say select column name space and then the column alias that you want to uh, use. Some systems do not work without this keyword as but some do without it. So it depends on uh, where you are running your queries. Now the table alias, we have the from table name and then we have an alias here. Each column actually can be prefixed by the table alias and followed by a dot. There are no spaces here if you notice. So it's table alias dot and then the column name. You can do this for every single column in the select statement. Actually the purpose of table alias I feel is much more useful when you have uh, two or more tables. So it will become more clear in the next uh, few lessons when we handle joining of tables. Here is an, an, another uh, way to use combine the table alias and also the column alias. So I think all these concepts will be more clear when we actually run our queries. So let's do some examples. So here we are in SQL. Let's run some queries to look at the column and table aliases. Okay, let's look at the column alias first. Go to select first name, last name, age for example and let's say birth date and I'm going to rename this column or use a column alias and call it birth, no sorry, date of birth and the table name. So let's run this query and see here we have the uh, new name for the column date of birth instead of birth date. Now there are different ways to use these aliases. I don't need the AS keyword so I'm going to remove it and it should still work. Now if I want to put spaces between this date of birth 
between all these different words, I would be using quotes actually. Date of birth and close the quote. And this would still work actually. So this makes much more sense when you want to do reports and stuff like that. And even this works actually if you put it in double quotes. Now we can remove the AS keyword if we don't want to. So I'm going to use double quotes. And maybe include a where clause where gender equals female let's say. So even that works and only the females in the list are selected. Of course we want to include the gender to make sure that the query is working correctly. Okay. So this is how you would rename a column. Now let's say we are creating a new column for example. Okay, that's not what I wanted. I'm going to copy this statement, paste it here and say I want to add two years to the age. Now if I don't uh, give it a new name, let's see what happens. It just says no column name. So this number actually doesn't make any sense when I look at it. I wouldn't know what it means. So now we can say new age. Let's put an underscore. So now we know, okay, this is a new age that we are, it's something related to the age at least that we are looking at in this query result set, okay. So this is one way to rename uh, or actually uh, name a new column. Let's look at another example, okay. We're going to combine the first and last names here and to do that, we're going to use a plus sign. This is how you would combine first and last names. But I want to include a space between them just to make sure that the first and last names don't merge together and more they, it shows up more meaningfully if we have the first name, a space. For the space I'm using two quotes separated by one space actually, a last name and then I give it a name called, okay, contact name let's say. So now you know the contact names are William Schroeder, Steve Wagner, Miriam Stanford, so on and so forth. So this is how the column alias is used. Let's look at the table alias now. Table alias. The table alias, uh, uh, the syntax for it is from the table name followed by a space and then the table alias name. I'm just going to call it simply as A. So each column I'm going to prefix it with the table alias and then a dot. So this is how we would use the table alias. And as I mentioned before, uh, this is going to be more meaningful when we have two or more tables in the from clause and that we'll deal with in our future lessons. Now if you notice I didn't say a dot new age because new age doesn't exist in this table main contact. It's just going to appear in the results. So only the, those columns that exist in the table get this alias and then a dot. So let's run this query and voila there you go. We see the new age and we use the table alias. Okay. So let's uh, move on to the next session. Okay, let's look at the functions now. In SQL there are several types of functions but in this lesson we are going to be looking at the aggregate functions like count which gives us the number of records. Min and max is something we have been seeing since our childhood days. It gives us the smallest and the largest values. And also the sum and average which gives us the summation of a column value and average value of a column. Let's look at the syntax for the count function. It selects count star or asterisk in parenthesis from and the table name. This actually gives us the count of records in a table. Unless you use a where clause, all the records are counted in the specific table. 
If you use a where then depending on the where condition the count is selected. You can also say select count column name from table name. Here it's going to count the values for a specified column. Once again, if you have a where condition, this is much more meaningful in that case. Select count distinct column name from table name. Remember we used the word distinct in the first lesson where we were selecting distinct values for a specified column. So here it's going to count the distinct values for a column. So this is how the count function works. It's pretty simple. Coming to the min and max functions can say select min column name and here is where I would use that column alias. Actually this can be used even in the count function but we'll uh, use it in our examples when we run the query examples. So min column name as column alias from table name. Let's not forget the from clause. So the min is going to select the smallest value of this particular column. Selecting max of the column name, column alias. As I mentioned, the AS keyword is not a must in every case. So if you don't want to use it, you can try and see if the query works. And max, of course, will select the largest value for the column. Sum and average functions. It's very, very similar to min and max. Select sum of a column name as and you can give it a new name. And this is the name that will appear in the query results. So this gives us a summation of a column value. Now select AVG of the column name as the column alias. So this gives us the average value of a column. So I think um, if we run some examples, all these concepts will be much more clear to us. So let's do that now. Okay, now let's run some uh, queries related to the functions. So let's do the count function first. Count. So we're going to select all the rows, count of all the rows in main contact. Let's see what happens. When we execute, it says there are 15 rows in the table. Now what we can do is, let's say where gender equals female. Here I'll be using the um, column alias so we'll know what this column is, what this count actually represents. So we'll say count of females. So I run the query and we say there are eight females in the list. Let's say count last name from main contact. Let's say where age equals 13 and say as last name count. So when we run this query, we notice that there are three people whose age is 13. Okay. Now, this is actually going to make more sense if you use distinct last name. If you remember, there are 15 people in our contacts. Now, let's see how many distinct last names are there in our list. There are only 14. That means two people have the same last name. So, this is how you would use the count function actually. Let's look at the min function. Now if you notice the count is actually showing up in a different color. So we know we are actually using a function in the query actually. So let's do this. Let's do min of age and say minimum age. So the minimum of age is 13. Now is it the same for males and females? So let's look at that. Where gender equals male. So 
So when we execute we see okay so the minimum age for males is actually 13. Let's do a copy and let's go to the max function now. When we say max, say maximum age. So the maximum age for males is actually 36 and for females let's say will it be the same? No, for females the maximum age is 48. Now let's look at the average age for example. Average. So let's change this to average and then rename this to average age. Average age of females. So it's 25.75. Okay. Now what's the other functions that we still have left? So we have looked at the count minimum, maximum, average. Now let's look at the sum function actually. Sum. So trip one expense because that's what makes more sense than saying give me the sum of age actually. So let's call this overall expense. Let's remove the where clause for now. So we are just getting the um, overall expense for trip 1 for all the contacts in our list and that is 86,709. Okay. So this is how these are all very very simple queries. So we get the average, min, max, summation, count, everything. So let's combine all of these and see how it actually looks. Let's say count star as number of contacts. Okay. Then we are going to say comma sum of trip 1 expense as let's copy this overall expense comma average of trip 1 expense is average expense from main contact. So here we are combining all the functions in one query. If we don't provide these aliases we won't even know what the numbers represent in the result set. So that's why we are actually naming these uh, columns, counts, count we are naming it as number of contacts and sum we are naming it as overall expense and average we are calling it as average expense. So now if we see this makes so much more sense. So we have looked at all the functions, the very very basic functions that we use in our queries. So thank you so much for uh, uh, making use of this tutorial hope it was uh, educational. Let's meet in, an, uh, in our another class with uh, another topic. Thank you and bye-bye.